recent moves, which they say curtail their religious practices. Well, the government in Copenhagen has closed the loophole and has completely outlawed the ritual slaughter of animals for meat. And now the country's doctors want to ban, ban the practice of circumcising male children. And momentum for that law is gathering pace. Malcolm Brabant reports. This cow is about to be slaughtered by devout Muslims applying the Danish version of halal rules. After a silent prayer, it's stunned. And then its throat is cut. This method has been used for years, but now the food minister has closed a loophole under which religious minorities could seek special dispensation to carry out ritual slaughter without stunning. It's important that we uh, have a balance, of course, between uh, religious freedom and animal welfare. The change in the law has alienated Muslims in Denmark and in the Middle East, who see it as an assault on their traditional practices. This change in the law has placed Denmark in an uncomfortable spotlight. There are some Islamic scholars in the Middle East who are calling for a boycott of Danish meat products. And exporters here are worried about their business in mainly Muslim countries. The Danes are relying on the persuasive powers of a leading moderate imam who accepts that the law must be obeyed. Some scholars say it's allowed to use the stoning. And some others say, no, it is not allowed. So we are with the group who say, OK, you can't slaughter with the stoning. Leaders of the Muslim and Jewish communities met the food minister last month to petition for halal and kosher slaughter, aggrieved that the government appeared to place animal rights above religious freedom. I think that it's important to say that, that the, the, the life conditions for Jews is narrowed down. It's important, it's a crucial uh, thing for us to eat uh, meat as we see it the right way to be slaughtered. We don't see the, st the stunning as uh, something that uh, removes pain, we see actually the stunning as something that causes pain to the animal. That's why we want to, to slaughter without stunning. The European law said you, you can give dispensation to the uh, religious minorities to slaughter as they see it right. The food minister is renowned for being tough on animal ethics, but he's keen not to cause offence to minorities. What is more important, animal rights or religious freedom? Well, religious freedom is a fundamental human right, and human rights are absolute. So that means that human rights are more important than uh, animal uh, ethic legislation, cultural legislation, whatever legislation. <laughs> If Denmark's small Jewish community is disappointed over kosher slaughter, it's more concerned about the prospect of legislation outlawing circumcision, carried out on baby boys when they're just eight days old. Momentum towards a ban is building. Circumcision is described in many different words, and one of them that has been used recently by the Danish general practitioners is uh, genital mutilation. And uh, I think that's appropriate because mutilation means that you do harm to a, another person's body. And that is what we see here. If we will have a ban on circumcision, then we are beyond uh, the, the green line of, of, of having Judaism in Denmark. Why? Because it's so, so important for the, uh, to, to identify yourself as a Jew, first of all, and to understand that Jews through the circumcision is a part of the people, the Jewish people. I have to sit down and relax. Yeah. Daniel Petring and Margarita Rusin are expecting a baby boy any day now and are saddened by what they regard as the anti-Semitic tone of the debate. Coffee, bananas. <laughs> when performed properly, I believe that circumcision poses no health risk. And uh, that's also why I believe that it's within uh, the parents' right to decide on behalf of the children whether it should be done or not. Margareta and her partner aren't particularly religious and haven't yet made up their minds whether to circumcise or not. They expect their instincts will guide them when they have their newborn son in their arms. Of course, uh, Michael Brabant reporting there. Well, we'll be crossing to Washington in the next uh, three minutes where we'll get the latest on the diplomatic push to de-escalate the situation regarding Crimea. All of that to come at the top of the hour.